Hello everyone, and welcome to my General Hospital official channel. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before we begin, please hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. Today on General Hospital, Anna vows to find Charlotte for Laura, Holly offers Cody an easy payday, and Stephen persuades Heather to accompany him to Arizona. Heather is taken aback by Stephen Lars and Elizabeth's presence outside of Pentonville. Stephen greets his sister Lizzie, and his mother hugs him. Heather believes Stephen has come for her. Liz hugs her brother, and Heather remarks that it is a strange coincidence that they both got out of prison at the same moment. Stephen says he has been away for a few months, and they have a lot to talk about, but not now. Heather knows where they should go and drags him away. Terry informs Laura that Sam's surgery has begun and that Lulu is being prepared to enter the operating room. She'll let her know when she has more information. Anna drops by to check up on Laura, who is currently on her alone while Rocco and Dante eat. Anna offers to stay with her. Laura believes she may not be the finest company. Laura thanks her for traveling to Africa to find Lucky and describes how Lucky was heartbroken that he couldn't save Lulu. According to Anna, Lucky remained calm in the face of a crisis and risked his life to save Isaiah. Laura comments that as a result, Isaiah has come to save Lulu. Cyrus approaches and requests to sit with his sister, but Laura says that she and Anna are in the middle of something. Anna excuses herself so they can speak. Cyrus offers to pray for Lulu. Laura enables him to, and he then says he'll leave her to her vigil. Laura requests that Cyrus not show up unexpectedly again and instead call her beforehand. Cyrus enters the elevator, and Anna returns with coffee. She's relieved Laura doesn't trust Cyrus. Laura is unsure what to think of him, but she has no illusions about him either. Laura asks Anna if she has heard from Valentine. Anna has not. Laura believes Charlotte should be here. Anna mentions that she has contacted numerous people but has not received a response. She is not giving up, and neither is Laura. Laura chatted with Brennan, and he said very little. Anna believes she can work another angle with Brennan. Laura believes it is bad for Charlotte to live her life on the run, and she is upset with Valentine for taking her. Anna claims Valentine could not have predicted this with Lulu, but Valentine understands how important Charlotte is to Laura and Lulu. She believes his choice to leave was swift. However, she swears to find Valentine and return Charlotte. Diane and Alexis are working in the conference room, which Terry arranged for them to use. Alexis is trying to distract herself from the procedure as they talk about their next cases. Their conversation quickly shifts to Molly and Christina's ongoing feud, Rick defending Ava, and Rick obtaining Heather's release from prison. Diane was unaware of Heather's existence and is outraged that the woman who nearly murdered her is free. Alexis calls Christina and then tells Diane how Rick lured her into losing control in public. She knows Rick will crucify Christina on the stand. Diane is confident that Alexis will have Christina well prepared. Alexis' focus changes to Diane's misery and Holly's return to town. Diane claims she is aware of Holly's situation and is content with her relationship with Robert. Holly is his history, and Roberts has established a life for himself here. Holly will soon be off to her next convention. Liz returns to work, and Terry inquires about how things went. Liz says that her brother Stephen arrived up unexpectedly, and he and Heather went to Bobby's for BLTs. They're curious why Stephen has showed up. Liz believes he's come to repair things, and she's relieved she won't have to deal with Heather alone for now. Heather purchases sandwiches for herself and her son from Bobby's and expresses her gratitude to Stephen for returning home. Stephen claims Port Charles is no longer his home. Heather understands that transitioning can be difficult, but he will recall why he loves Port Charles soon enough. She claims she'll be rolling in wealth soon and can get them a nice house and swing set for Ace. Stephen explains that he can't remain because he has a job in Arizona. He states that neither he nor she will be staying. Stephen urges Heather to start a fresh life in Arizona with him. Heather believes they should stay here, and that General Hospital will take him back. He says that he is no longer a doctor. Heather feels he is still hung up on Olivia, which is why he does not wish to stay. 
Stephen claims Olivia is not up for discussion. Heather questions why he's here and why he wants her to travel to Arizona. He emphasizes that they need to make atonement and that the family should stick together. Heather claims that some of her family is still here and she cannot leave Ace. Stephen argues that if they leave, she will be able to move on from her past and focus on who she is now. He claims that people here no longer trust him, which is why he invites her to join him. He claims individuals may live a life without hurting anyone else or themselves. Heather agrees to go with him. However, there are some things she needs to do beforehand. Back at the hospital, Stephen and Heather speak with Liz. Heather revealed that Stephen is taking her back to Arizona, and they are here to say goodbye. Heather explains that Stephen made her realize that staying here would be difficult for her and the people she has affected. Liz believes that is wise. Laura steps out of the elevator, and Heather runs over to her. Anna meets Alexis, who is currently alone. She inquires if Alexis has heard from Valentine. Alexis has not. Anna explains that Laura wants to bring Charlotte home. Alexis agrees that she should return home and investigate whether the Cassidine holdings have been compromised. Sasha visits Robert's workplace. Robert has the results, which he has not yet opened. He hands her the envelope, which she opens. It claims Robert is her father, and she immediately suspects Holly tampered with it. Robert claims it was done in a secure WSB lab, and he believes Holly isn't lying for once. They settle down, and Sasha realizes Robert is her father. Robert declares, better late than never. Sasha realizes that she and Cody are first cousins. Sasha is in tears after losing Cody. She apologizes for not jumping with excitement at getting to meet her father. Robert understands, but he considers himself quite fortunate and wishes to get to know her. She informs him that he has been so kind throughout this. Later, Diane appears to see Robert. Robert says that he just learned that he has another daughter, whom they both know. It's Sasha Corbin. Diane is stunned. Robert explains that Sasha assumed her father had died and that her mother's name is Holly. Diane rolls her eyes. When Sasha arrives at Crimson, Nina is already on the phone discussing business. Nina notices Sasha is angry and inquires as to what the problem is. Sasha reveals she has been lying to her for a long time, and it is significant. Sasha claims she informed her that her mother was dead, although she is still alive and well. Nina is surprised, but wonders why she is confessing now. Sasha tells that her mother is back in Port Charles, and her name is Holly Sutton. Today on General Hospital, Sam and her family prepare for surgery, Brad and Lucas begin to thaw, and Curtis makes a pitch to Stephen. On today's General Hospital, Alexis and Danny are both proud as they complete their meals, and Scout expresses how important it is that Mom is saving someone's life. Scout leaves to wash her hands, and Alexis says Rocco is a good big brother. He always steps up when she needs him. I think you're awesome, and so does your mom. Brennan is on the phone with Carly, questioning why she is avoiding him. He has to see her immediately. She claims it's not a good moment, but he believes it's necessary. Trust me, so is this. Carly hangs up and enters Sam's room, inquiring how she is. She believes Lulu will need a miracle to get through, but she has a shot thanks to Sam. If you need anything, please tell me. G.H.'s Sam gestures to a book in her lap, looking up eagerly from her hospital bed. Sam smiles, explaining that Carly did not come in for a chat. She wants something. As always. Yes, I do. I wanted to thank you. Sam looks at her, chuckling, and admits that Carly surprised her, but before they can bond too much, Brennan enters, asking for Carly. Sonny visits Jason in his office, exchanges niceties about Sam's special day, and then demands to know what occurred in Africa. Jason updates Sonny on Sidwell, Lucky, and the WSB intervention. They got Lucky out, and Holly was there. She had the diamond? He asks. Sonny says, diamonds, plural. She has enough for him to realize she is in jeopardy. The kind of hassle that could be worth it. 
the loot will most certainly be approximately $100 million and Sunny wants to collaborate with her. Jason warns him that Sidwell is still alive and is in the United States, most likely seeking for Holly. Jason claims it was his mistake to leave Sidwell alive. Sunny believes that if they act quickly, they will be able to get Holly out before Sidwell connects the dots. But he has somewhere to go and departs, just as Carly phones Jason. Brennan brings Carly outside, and she scolds him for dragging her away while Lulu is going to drown. Great, but first he needs her to persuade Jason to cooperate. He has important knowledge on the Lucky Spencer operation. Carly is hesitant to assist him until Brennan informs her that Sidwell will be visiting the United States, most likely for Anna and Jason, and that the extraction she requested his assistance with is about to turn into a full-fledged international catastrophe. Why did you help me? If she has to ask, she isn't as intelligent as she appears. It was chivalry, but she questions it. Jason approaches, angry that Carly did not mention Brennan when she called. She requests a favor for both of them. Jack requires complete information about what occurred. He saved Jason's life, and she and Jason both owe him. Please help him. She leaves the two alone. Laura grabs Lulu's hand as Dante and Rocco open the door, assuring her that she and everyone else will be there. She advises Rocco that now is the time to say something to his mother before surgery. Rocco sits down beside her. Dante and Laura wonder if she will know him when she wakes up, as the teen places his cross-country medal in his mother's hands. Lulu taught him never to give up. Don't give up now. With the locker room, Isaiah is standing with his eyes closed as Lucas walks by with a towel. Isaiah is imagining the surgery, and they both say they are ready. Isaiah goes away, leaving Lucas to discover a cinnamon bun in his locker with a letter. He begins eating as Brad enters, stating that he always needs Eckert's before operating, unless he is hungry for something else. Lucas is horrified. Brad was at his locker, saying he had clearly defined his boundaries. He just had some leftover food and wanted to show his support. He will take it back. But Lucas replies he's already had a taste, takes a step back, and drops his towel. Relax, it's nothing I haven't seen before. Lucas becomes uneasy as he walks away. G.H. Isaiah speaks seriously to Laura, holding her hands and looking directly at her. Out in the waiting room, Dante suggests that Rocco go to school. He doesn't want to leave, so Dante offers if Sam agrees, he can stay and do his schoolwork. As they leave, Isaiah approaches and Laura inquires about their well-being. They discuss the hazards, but Laura assures the doctor that if he gives her the opportunity, she will succeed. Rick sits with Heather in the jail conference room. She regrets missing Alexis and expresses a desire to win something. Rick informs her that the judge has vacated her sentence. She's going free. She's stunned. Are you messing with me? There are no halfway houses, parole officers, or ankle monitors. Nothing. She's completely free. Heather stands up, shouts, and hugs Rick, thanking him sincerely. She plans to make the most of her second chance. That's excellent, but the hip settlement may take some time to arrive, so she'll have to sustain herself in the meantime. She does not want to think about that right now. Fine, but she needs to find a place to stay. She names Laura or Alexis, but Rick argues they are both going through a crisis and are connected. G.H.'s Rick sits patiently at the prison table with Heather, studying her with folded hands while she speaks. Think. Is there anyone I can call? Liz tells Portia about Heather and asks if she can help. If plan A fails, I may take you up on that offer. Liz wonders what plan A is. She does not receive an answer because Portia insists that they focus on the transplant rather than Heather. Curtis is taking care of her. Liz warns her to be cautious. Isaiah comes over to help himself to some Eckert's, but is called away before he can finish his meal. Brad wanders over, agreeing to hold one for the doctor, then informs Liz and Portia that he needs to leave his work early to attend a baseball game. Liz is stunned, but Brad makes a veiled remark to Portia, who looks unwell and encourages him to have fun. Liz from General Hospital frowns as she glances up at Portia. 
They're discussing about Brad when Lucas steps in and cracks a joke about Brad's pastries, prompting the crew to forget about him. In his office, Curtis meets Steve as Heather Weber's prodigal son. Steve informs Curtis that he is no longer a doctor and inquires as to why he requested an in-person appointment. He doesn't want to remain long, Port Charles has a lot of negative memories. Curtis informs him that when Steve departs, he wants him to take his mother with him. I was really, really hoping this trip had nothing to do with Heather. Curtis updates Steve on Heather's release. He stands up, shocked. What do you want from me? Curtis simply wants him to take Heather far away from Port Charles, but Steve refuses. Curtis claims he'll make it worthwhile. Steve isn't sure he could get her if he wanted to. He can't get her out of Port Charles. Curtis is confident she will go voluntarily. Laura will finally cut off access to Ace, leaving only Steve. Steve continues to refuse to accept responsibility for her, so Curtis threatens him that if he does not, he would be held accountable for what's left of her. He wants to defend his family, and Steve needs to be with them. Curtis will boost Steve's income until he is able to support himself independently. It is either that or the alternatives, which are much less pleasant. After some thought, Heather phones Liz and asks if she can bring her up from prison for Franco. Thanks for watching if you like this video, so please don't forget to subscribe my channel and don't miss any update.